What is going on, guys? What's popping? So Spurs basketball is finally back. And before I get started, I want y'all to do me a big favor and smash that subscribe button and the notification bell. So every time I post a new Spurs video, you get an update, you get a notification. But anyways, guys, yeah. So first game of the season, it was a big win over the Memphis Grizzlies. I think we put up like 131 points, which up to that point was the, the most scored in the NBA so far. So that was awesome to see. And guys, it was good stuff. If you were one of the Spurs fans like myself that were worried after watching preseason basketball and just notably the way guys were playing, the way the lineups and coaching was, there was a lot of reason for concern. Although we know it's just preseason basketball and it was just a few games. But um, Pop and the Spurs came out and kind of just killed all those worries away. Now, there's definitely still a couple issues we have to worry about, but things were good, guys. Um, starting with just the lineups and the rotation. I mean, Pop came out with a lineup of DeJounte Murray. Lonnie Walker started at the two because Derek White's still out, so which is fine. Um, I believe that Keldon Johnson started at the three, DeMar DeRozan at the four, and LaMarcus Aldridge at the five. And, guys, that was something I had been saying from the preseason that it worked in the bubble with DeRozan at the four and had that one big and not to start Trey Lyles or Rudy Gay. And when I was talking in one of my last videos about what to do with that situation, I was saying you got to start DeRozan, you got to bring Rudy Gay off the bench, and you probably just can't put Trey Lyles in the rotation. And if you do, you got to give him spot minutes. And it, it seemed like Pop in it, you know, he took that idea to heart. Obviously, he didn't watch my video, but... um. Trey Lyles didn't play tonight, and, and I think that's got to continue. And it's okay if he's going to take, you know, if, if Rudy Gay is getting a day off or maybe we have to sit Aldridge a day or we have to sit DeRozan a day, something like that, and to give Lyles minutes here and there on certain days. Uh, he's definitely capable of that. But the rotation just worked out so much better the way it was, so that was awesome to see. Um, the bench unit was just fine, was Patty Mills, Devin Vassell, uh, Rudy Gay, and Jakob Pertl. And I'm assuming that fifth player off the bench will be Lonnie Walker when Derek White comes back. So it'll either be Derek or DeJounte or Lonnie. One of those guys can't start, right? But anyways, let's go kind of player by player and just give a little rundown of how they looked. First, I do want to mention one of the struggles was defense and you know, guys, some guys stepped up. I'd have to go back and watch tape to see what the real problems were on defense. But it seemed like um, John Morant was just coming off of screens, getting in the paint. And LaMarcus Aldridge, just he was either too slow or just had no idea what to do. Didn't put a hand up quick enough. He, he just couldn't guard John Morant. I don't know if I can really blame him for that. I mean, John Morant's really good. He's very quick, athletic, and he's just a very good finisher. So uh, we got to limit him a little better than that. Uh, just dropping 44-8 assists, it, it's a little crazy. Kind of went off. But at the same time, he, he's a tough guard. I, I kind of think we did a little better when Pirtle was in the game at defending the paint. But that shouldn't surprise many people. Uh, at the same time, some guys were making a lot of individual plays. I, I saw Vassell make a couple nice plays on defense. Um, Lonnie Walker had a, a steal or two that ended up in transition buckets as well as De, DeJounte Murray. So that was really good to see. So we'll start out with DeJounte Murray. And guys, he played a very good game because one, he was playing the passing lanes and that's what he does best. And, and he was getting steals. And two, he, he was aggressive in transition. He was just attacking the basket and he was making the right pass. But what he wasn't doing which is key, was stalling the offense. He, he just wasn't sitting out there, not active, not involved. And, and he does that sometimes, and it kills us. He didn't do that tonight. So I think DeJounte might have put up 20 or close to it, um, had a decent amount of rebounds as well, and some assists. And, man, he played a good game. Um, he helped get Aldridge set up as well, and those pick and pops with LaMarcus Aldridge where Aldridge started knocking down those mid-range jumpers. So... I think we got to say that DeJounte did his thing. The only real concern with him is consistency, right? Can he do this day in and day out? Because if he can have performances like that or, or up to par consistently, then I think we can say I was wrong on DeJounte Murray and we've got something. 
But I do want to point out this is something that we've seen before with him. And, you know, who knows how it's going to be game to game. But I'm not going to say anything negative about him because he played a very good game as the starting point guard. And, no, he didn't outplay John Morant, but he, he did his thing. He didn't go out there and exactly get school. Now, defensively, outside of getting the steals and playing the pass lanes, I don't know how well he did against Ja on the pick and rolls and stuff. Have to go back and look at that. I also noticed Ja a lot getting defended by some bigger guys like Keldon and Vassell. So, like I said, some other guys will have to point out what the tape shows. I'm making this video right after the game. Post-game, kind of tired. So, you know, I, I didn't follow it that close. But um, Lonnie Walker, um, best spot-up shooter on the team tonight, for sure. So, that that was awesome. I think he was 3 of 4 from 3. And that looks like the most improved part of his game it is just his shooting form. It looks smooth, man. It looks nice. So I, I, I saw that in the preseason as well, even though he was kind of hit or miss in the preseason. Uh, looks like he, him and Chip England are working together and really improving his shot. And it looks like he's putting in the work because we know he's still very green, probably shouldn't be starting in the starting lineup on a day-to-day -day basis, but I don't think he will be. I think he'll make some starts. But when Derek White's back, he'll probably be the starting two. Um, but but anyways, I, I like Lonnie Walker as part of the rotation off the bench. I think he's ready for it. I think he's improved. Defensively, he, he's you know he's focused. He, he's moving his feet well. The the problem is sometimes on offense, it just it doesn't look like he really knows where to be or what's going on. That's being nitpicky though. He played a very nice game, and man, he had a couple dunks and transition where you're just like wow like yeah the skywalker is the perfect name nickname for lonnie walker i mean that's him man he can dude's got hops i mean he hangs in the air it's insane so love watching lonnie walker play love to see him be aggressive and have a great game and i think one of the reasons why he and Dejounte murray were so aggressive got to give some credit to Keldon big body johnson and we talk about a guy who's always aggressive uh, I think he only knocked down one three. Uh, he missed two. But his shooting form is also looking pretty spectacular. So I expect him to to slowly improving his three-point shooting in, in his second year. And guys, the other thing he does, which we all know well, is attacking the basket recklessly, aggressively. And I just love to see it. And man, he was kind of owning... Jonas Valanciunas out there. I mean, just going up strong, going up over him and, and finishing. He's he's controlled. Uh, you know, I say reckless, but reckless, but good at finishing. So he's awesome to see. He's a very deceptively strong, um, pretty decent defender as well. Uh, defensively tonight, I, I don't know if I saw a lot of great things out of him. But again, guys that watch tape, uh, watch this game a little closer than I did, can speak on that. Either way. Solid offensive game. Think he had 16 points as well. Now, DeMar DeRozan at the four. I love what I, I see right now out of DeMar DeRozan. You know, you can tell me what you think of him defensively. I don't care. Nights like this, when he's this good on offense, then I I don't really care. As long as he's not god-awful on defense, he, he's, he brings everything to the table, in my opinion. I mean, his footwork, his soft touch of the basket, his um, ball handling, uh, his moves in the post. I, I mean, dude's offensive game is just immaculate, right? So he, he looked elite out there tonight, just getting in the post, uh, just putting moves on guys, making defenders miss, finishing at the rim. Um, all the Grizzlies could really hope for with DeRozan is that he just didn't miss or that they could foul him and, you know, ho hope he misses because a lot of the times he still doesn't get enough fouls called on him. Um, imagine if James Harden was getting hacked that much, as much as he gets fouls called on him, man, I mean, that's DeRozan. I mean, he's getting hit pretty much every time he drives to the basket and he gets to the free throw line plenty, but not every time he's fouled that that's for sure. So I thought DeRozan was friggin' awesome. Now, LaMarcus Aldridge starting at the five. And I think this is kind of how we have to use him because he doesn't fit naturally in this offense. And like I said when and when I when I made the video last week about LaMarcus Aldridge, he's not this spot up three point shooter, so you can't use him like that. But he does have that smooth mid range game, and his shot just happened to be falling tonight. So it worked out nice. He was able to make it work. 
able to fit in the system. And th- that's what he's going to have to do. He's just going to have to find ways to fit. And, and then I think he even made one three tonight. So, But he only took a few. And I think that's what's going to have to happen. Uh, maybe he was just testing out shooting more threes in the preseason just to see what worked, see what didn't. But um, that's my, co- my goal, my key for LaMarcus Aldridge. I'll say it's a phrase. Make it work. Just fit however you can fit in that offense. Because I know it's always going to be a little awkward, but... Nights like tonight, he made it work. Now, the bench unit, Patty Mills came out. He was making buckets. He played a solid game. Again, defensively, we we could probably judge him, and he's definitely somebody I saw just leaving some guys. uh, I'm thinking Desmond Bain, maybe Dylan Brooks, just leaving guys wide open, right? D'Anthony Melton. So we could definitely blame Patty for some of of our defensive errors for sure. But at the same time, he was knocking down the, the three ball, made some jump shots, got to the foul line, getting layups in transition. Everything we like to see off- offensively from Patty, solid game. Um, Rudy Gay, uh, again, he was kind of ab- abusing the guys and, and the paint, just getting those easy mid-range buckets. He was not shooting the three ball well. I think he was the worst shooter tonight, like one for five from three. But outside of that, he was kind of doing what you like to see out of him in the bench roll. And guys defensively I do want to say man Rudy Gay looks strong under the basket and uh I, I want to say he contributed to a couple misses at the rim from like Tyus Jones maybe Ja Morant and, and Dylan Brooks and a couple other guys so I, I really like what I saw out of Rudy Gay as far as the hustle goes the effort that sort of thing um Jakob Pertl if we're going to talk about him one thing I got to say is he was a little soft when it came to finishing at the rim but I thought he competed, and there were times where he looked very good at the basket defensively. So I I, I think Jakob Pertle played a really good game. Um, I would have liked to see him play more towards the end of that game. Uh, I, and it's not like I, I know we're going to use LaMarcus Aldridge to close games, but I think we pulled Pertle out like seven and a half minutes left in the game. Maybe give him two or three more minutes, right? And, and then see what goes, see what works, go from there. Uh, but yeah, I, I like the way Pirtle played, and that leaves the last player in the rotation, which was Devin Vassell, the rookie. And you know, you can't really make much of a highlight video from this game. He he played 20 minutes, but on offense, I, I'm not gonna say he wasn't active, but he wasn't heavily involved, right? So I noticed multiple times where he was standing at the three point line, wide open, and I think the, the guy with the ball is probably on the other side of the basket, didn't see him, that sort of thing, or they were playing ISO. And um, so he didn't get a lot of looks, but he missed a few shots and he hit one pretty big three in the fourth quarter towards the end. And one thing I noticed about that three was uh, he didn't have much space and it didn't really matter. So he's kind of lanky, tall, but but has some really good length and um, has a high release point. So it doesn't seem like he needs to be wide open to take the shots. So that was good. Also noticed that Vassell made a couple really nice plays on defense. One, I think, was like a block shot in transition. And I think he got a hand on it, and so did Jakob Pertl. So you could give them both credit for the block if you really want to. Um, I don't know who got it on the stat sheet. But yeah, I, I like what I saw from him. I want him to be a little more aggressive moving forward. Although, I will say Pop played him some in the first quarter. And I don't think we saw him again till like the late in the third or the fourth, but at the same time, he did get 20 minutes. So yeah, he had time to be involved, right? But anyways, guys, you can't nitpick too much. You can't complain too much because the Spurs were not only very good tonight, very efficient offensively, but we were very fun to watch, right? I mean, let's just say it. There were a lot of times last year before the bubble where we just weren't a very enjoyable team to watch. And that was what I was talking about from the preseason. It just wasn't fun to watch. Tonight was fun basketball against the Memphis Grizzlies, man. And the Grizzlies are going to be a tough team to beat in in the Western Conference. If we're going to make the playoffs or compete for the playoffs for for that 7th or 8th seed, they're one of the teams we got to be able to beat and got to be able to compete with. And we definitely did. We were the better team tonight. So that was awesome to see. And let's not forget that, one, the Grizzlies are getting Jaron Jackson Jr. And a couple guys, I, I think they have a couple other guys out with injury as well back. So that's one thing, but the Spurs are getting Derek White back and he'll probably be starting and he's arguably, I'm not going to call him the best player on the team because I think at this point, 
if, if you're watching DeMar DeRozan on, on offense, I mean, he's clearly the most talented offensive player on the team. But as far as both sides of the floor goes, I mean, Derek White's definitely up there, right? So when he gets back, man, there's going to be some more exciting things to come this season. One of the keys, I think, to our success is just with those young guys. When And when I say the young guys, I mean DeJounte Murray, Lonnie Walker, Derek White. Keldon Johnson doesn't have this problem, but he's got to continue with it, right? Um, Devin Vassell, and it's all about the aggression. If those guys can stay aggressive, man, the talent is there. The youth and the talent is just through the freaking roof. So guys, let me know what you thought of that first game against the Grizzlies. Let, give me some feedback on what I had to say. And that's pretty much going to do it for today, guys. Don't forget to also like and subscribe. And like I said, hit that notification bell again. But I'm out. Peace.